Yeah. So variety and training, let's start there. So it's kind of like variety in your diet. You don't want to eat the same thing every single day. You don't want to run the same thing every day. We want to have um, a whole menu of things to choose from. And, and I would argue the biggest thing on your plate should be vegetables. And yes. the biggest thing on your running plate should be slow, easy running. Yeah. Would you say? 100%. Yeah. And even if you look at the best runners, uh, like it, Jakob Ingebrigtsen is, say, current 1500 meter champion, but they'd have, there's been a lot of studies looking at their training and like 80% of what they do is easy, 20% is hard. And even that, even that 20% is not, is not, it's not flat out. It's not a hundred percent. One thing, um, I've, I've, I've done physio or physical therapy and I've trained with a lot of very elite groups. And the surprising thing is that at every level, they would have been a lot better than me, but there wasn't one, there wasn't one workout or run that you couldn't stay with them on. It was just that their general level was just a lot higher that they just know, don't go to a hundred percent today because then that, that from 90 to a hundred percent is the big risk. Even when you're doing right. something hard, you're going to get so much of the benefit from 90% and real reduced risk. And then they know if I can keep doing that consistently over time, that's going to get the big improvements. Yeah, yeah. We could we could do a whole podcast on uh, Norwegian middle distance running, yeah. but <laughs> but I I really think we need to kind of um, repeat that point because what so many um, untrained runners or people who have just starting to just started to fall in love with the sport, what you, we see a lot is I want to run faster because I want to run fast, yeah. <laughs> and so they go all out hands on knees, you know, at the end of every interval. And, you know, they start off a workout extremely strong. And by the time they get to the last 400, they're, you know, a minute per mile slower than the first 400. You know, they've clearly revved up their engine, put themselves into the red. But that is so important to hammer home that that top 10%, 10%, 90% to 100% is something you should really almost never touch. <laughs> is yeah. that correct? Well, it should always feel at 90%. What you'll find is that if you look back at the times in six, eight weeks, what now feels like 90% would be, you've probably been at 110%. Just to, just yeah. on that, because it is really important, even for performance-wise, basically there's you have two main systems in your body. You have the anaerobic system and the aerobic system. The aerobic system, we use oxygen. That's used for, say, 5K, 10K, even 1500s, which I would have done. It's about 70% aerobic. You're getting to into the 90% when you go to 5K. Now, this, this is, as you were saying, even not for injury-wise, after, that's about 80% effort, so which would be tempo work. So usually if... Mm-hmm. You might have a heart rate strap and get the, a lactic test done, which is the most scientific. They only cost about $100, 150 They're not crazy expensive. Um, or if you're singing a song, you should be able to sing one line of the song without having to take a breath. So, you know, ha- happy oh. birthday to you. You know, if you're, if you're having to take a breath after two, two, two words, three words, it's too little. If you can sing the whole song, you can pick it up a little bit. Um, Good tip. Yeah. This is, this is important because, and this, I, I got a lot better at 5Ks and 10Ks like recently because I came from an anaerobic 800 meters. So I used to always hit sessions hard. But what happens, right, is when people are hands on knees, that is you're training anaerobically. So that what mm-hmm. you're training is your ability to tolerate lactic. Okay, so you're in anaerobic and you're training your ability to tolerate lactic, which will help you for 400 meters or 800 meters. But you can't, tr- you can't improve aerobically training anaerobically, meaning, mm-hmm. meaning like if you have a car and you want to get that car super efficient at being in like, say, fourth gear, you can't do that training in sixth gear. You get better at the sixth gear. So what happens yes. is, People are, 
it's it's really counterintuitive, but if you know if you know your energy systems, it makes perfect sense. You cannot get better at aerobic events if you don't train aerobically. Because what should mm-hmm. happen is if you train at 80%, over time you just top that up higher. Now your anaerobic will always stay roughly the same. If you train too hard where your hands on knees, you'll get a little bit better anaerobically, but your aerobic will never improve. Mm-hmm. Therefore, your, your 5Ks will always be the same. You'll feel easy for the first, first K, and by the third K, you'll start dying. And then you'll be able to sprint yes. a little bit at the end because you can tolerate lactic. So it's not even an injury prevention thing. It's you have to train below 80%. That lactic threshold is so important to improve your 5k, your 10k, your 10k times, even have to improve, train slower at like what would be called zone two, like 2.2 on a lactic scale um, to improve your marathon, because that's the zone that you're going to be running in. So you can't improve, you can't improve aerobically by running anaerobically. 